Nu aduce anul, ci aduce ceasul. Astăzi am ocazia să discut cu un doctor, un inventator și un vinificator, adică cu domnul doctor Paolo Malo, inventatorul anului 2011, despre Olon for, invenția sa, despre vinuri, despre România și despre experiența sa. You are a very busy person traveling all over the world, making people smile again. How do you find time for your passions? <laughs> I, um, my passion is actually it is working. I love working. So I do find time every day to work. <laughs> But, uh, but I have, uh, of course, other activities. Um, I am, by nature, I am a farmer. And uh, my father was a professional hunter in Africa and a farmer. So I, will, I, I grew up in this environment of, uh, of safaris and uh, farming. So, so I myself have a, a safari lodge in the south of Angola, where I visit as much as I can. And I have, uh, of course, a big farm over there. But also in Europe, I have uh, I have farms of uh, of uh, sheep and uh, and wine, of course, and some uh, and vegetables and pigs. <laughs> <laughs> so so my I I love farming. I love uh, Africa. Not hunting so much. I don't like to kill so much, but I do like to to um, develop the animals and. Uh, and take the tourists around. Sometimes I myself uh, I am the safari guide when I can. And of course my, my profession as well. Uh, so I love this very much. Can you describe a day or one week program? Maybe you leak some tricks that uh, we all can use to improve our routine. Um, my, my week is, um, is never the same. So I travel every week. Uh, normally I, I travel on Wednesday and then I work on the other country Thursday, Friday and Saturday and come back Saturday um, where my family is in Portugal. And then, um, and then of course I do, I do work also in Portugal where I, have, I am based at this moment in Lisbon and I go to the farm. I have um, a farm which is also a resort uh, and it's becoming actually very famous now. And uh, which is a wine resort. Uh, so we have a lot, lots of animals in this resort. We have ostriches and deer and boars. And so it's a resort made for families to, for the kids to understand nature and um, lots of activities. So this resort is becoming actually very famous and we are receiving a lot of people. And I also love to go there and, um, and uh, benefit from, the, from nature and uh, yeah. Environment. Yeah. So, so basically, it's like that. It's um, two, three days per week. I'm at outside the country now in Europe, and uh, because of this pandemic situation, and uh, before the pandemic and after the pandemic, I'll continue to go um, overseas. So it will not be weekly. Yeah. It will be like say every ten days. Um, I will be out for maybe one week or ten days, and then come back for uh, three, four days. So, so that was the routine before the pandemic, and it will be back after the pandemic. Ten days outside, three, four days inside. Ten days outside, three, four days inside. Now it's three, four days uh, outside, three, four days inside, three, four days outside, three, four days inside. Always on the run. Always on the run. Yeah. Um, more, it's it's always on the flying. <laughs> I am myself very passionate about wines. When did you find to be your passion and how did it go from passion to business? In fact, it was never a hobby. It started as a business. Oh. Yes. Um, yes. And um, I, I, I am not uh, a drinker. I like to drink wine, of course, but I'm not a... Uh, um, I'm not uh, somebody that drinks wine every day, for instance. You know, I do not drink wine every day. I like to drink wine when, uh, when I have a, mo a meal that, uh, that uh, brings the wine to the table or if I am with friends. Yes, then I, I like to have a glass or two of wine. I normally do not drink more than two glasses of wine. I, I'm a very moderate uh, wine drinker. Uh, I, but I do love the challenge of making good wine because wine is something that has two things that I like. Number one is very linked to 
to nature. And number two is very sophisticated and very challenging to make a wine better than the others and go to the contests and win some medals. I started about 15 years ago and uh, we have more than 300 medals, including four gold, world gold medals. So this is, and I'm competing against people that are 300, 400 years in the market. So, um, so I'm really very, very proud of what the team has achieved uh, in the wine, uh, in the wine business, and we're making about uh, six million bottles a year, so we are uh, not uh, not so small. When you make a new partner in different parts of the world, what are the two things that you like to explore in that country besides the business aspects? Well, I th there are two things that when I go to a country, there are two things that I really um, try to learn as much as possible. One of them is the food. I am passionate about the food of each country. What kind of food they eat, uh, how do they eat it, and, uh, and uh, this, is, this to me is really intriguing because it actually changes in every country. Even in Europe, that we are quite almost the same family, but we do have huge differences uh, in Europe. We eat more meat in the East, less meat in the, in the West. And, uh, and, um, and, uh, and it's really funny in the way you cook it, you know, what kind of meat you eat. And uh, so it's really, really something that, that I really like to learn about. And the other thing is, actually, I like to see and, and, and learn how people relate to each other. Some countries, people shake hands. Other countries, uh, people do not touch each other. Of course, I'm not talking the pandemic now. I'm talking in normal, in normal times. Uh, some countries, people hug or kiss. Other countries, people just shake hands or stay away. Uh, some countries, people invite you to their home to, to have dinner or to have a drink or to make a barbecue. Some countries, you never go to these people's home, even if it's a good friend. So it's really uh, intriguing how people react. Some countries, is this culture of after dinner, going for a drink in a, in a bar or, or somewhere, you know, and what do you drink? Do you drink wine or do you drink vodka or uh, spirits, you know? So, so I, I really like to know, I, I really like to know, it's something that I really enjoy, is to learn how people relate to each other, uh, how, what they do, they dress, uh, uh, if, they, if, they are, if they are more, um, uh, if they have beers or no yeah. beers, because this changes. <clears throat> Although lately, more people are growing beers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> beards, uh, beards is something that people are growing now. Uh, when I was a teenager, we didn't really see met, uh, many beards. We saw mustaches. Mm -hmm. And then there was the end of the mustaches, and then it was clean faces. Now the beers come again. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really funny, you know, and the, the way the people dress, the way the people uh, present themselves, they relate to each other and the food. I really enjoy that. Tell me something about Romania and about what did you expect to find here and how are the doctors? Well, Romania, it's a Latin country. And uh, being a Latin country, uh, there are many words that we share. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's number one. Uh, secondly, um, uh, this country also because of the Latin culture. Although it, it's a, although it's a Latin country, it's a Latin uh, a Latin country that has been um, it's been touched by the Eastern influence. So it's kind of on the border uh, because it is not Latin like Spain or Portugal or Italy or France. Uh, Portugal, Italy. Uh, France and, and, and Spain, they are very, very much, um, uh, let's say, similar. Here, although it is a Latin country, it is not so similar. Not similar. It's not so similar. They, they, here we have a lot of influence from the East, right? But the Latin influence still here. So, so how do you see that? It's the way people relate to each other. Uh, people here, they relate uh, with a very friendly atmosphere. Uh, we joke a lot, we shake hands, uh, we tap in the, in the shoulder. So this is very Latin. This is very Latin. The, the, the physical contact is very Latin. So we find this in Romania. 
the food in Romania um, is not so Latin because Latin people they tend to to eat a lot of fish yeah. and, and and boiled vegetables. In Romania, uh, my experience is not so much fish; it's more meat. It's it's a meat country, you know, and. Uh, and uh, but you do also, and you do not have uh, boiled vegetables. This is not normal. You have cooked vegetables. Yeah. So there's a little bit difference uh, in the in, in yes in the in the food. But the people um, have this physical contact, which I I I, I like some. I, I really like very much. I I like people that. I'm a physical person, you know, so I like people that come to me and, hey, how are you doing? And this, I like this physical contact. Yes, yes. I like this physical contact. And I, I, I am African. So we have actually even more of this. We, we are very physical. And, uh, and um, so this contact, for me, it's, it's something that I really appreciate here in, uh, in Romania. The doctors are, are people that are, you know, they are Romanian, so they, they are also very nice and, uh, we, you know, very friendly and, and, and uh, uh, physical contact w between us. Of course, now with the pandemic, we have to yeah. keep distances. We wear masks, you know, and things like that. But, um, uh, but uh, we are, uh, in that sense, we are very much the same. I myself, I'm a patient of Dentestet. What is the natural choice of your, this partnership? Well, um, you know, Malo Dental is uh, a world company. Actually, we are the biggest uh, by geographical uh, footprint in the world. We are actually, we are not only the biggest, we are the only one. As far as I'm concerned, there is no other dental company that is present in 20 countries, not even in four or five, you know, it's... Uh... So, Romania is obviously a country that we needed to be here. And we needed to be here for two reasons. First, uh, it's a country that is growing, so it's interesting in terms of marketing. And uh, it is a country that has a huge population uh, that can afford uh, treatments to that we are specialists in, uh, namely more aesthetic treatments or complex treatments. So this country is starting to enter that type of treatments that, uh, that were not here before. And we benefit from this, uh, from this entrance. In fact, we are quickly getting to be number one in Romania because of this, because of this knowledge that we, that we brought in. So it is, it is both a business opportunity, but also it was in our list of growth because you cannot grow in Europe without coming to Romania. You know? I would not say that that would be the first country that I would go to because you know, we've been in Italy and... and um, and Germany and Switzerland and everything, but Romania would come. And in fact, um, I gave priority to Romania uh, because I met the people from Dentestet and uh, these people are very professional. Uh, this is, uh, I think this is the biggest group in, uh, in Romania and it's definitely the most organized group in Romania. And for us, an international company, to go to another country and make a partnership, we need to make a partnership with an organized company uh, so that we, we become more efficient. So Dentestet in Romania was, was almost like the only possibility. Uh, we did not really, um, we did have some conversations with others, uh, it is a fact, but it was also very obvious that, uh, that uh, our path would be uh, with Dentestet for the size, for the quality of the work they already had and for the, or the type of organization. This is a company that is run in an organized fashion. It's not run as a small office. This, is, this, this company is already a company that we have the, the different hierarchies and steps, so very easy to connect. You are the inventor of All On 4 concept. Did you expect to have such an impact on patients' life, not only on their smile? No. Um, you see, All On 4 was developed in the early 90s. And when you develop something of this type, we actually do not understand the impact on people's lives and doctors' lives as this type of uh, treatment has, uh, has, uh, has done. Uh, we, we knew, I knew, that this would be a major breakthrough. Obviously, I knew that. 
I knew that this would uh, definitely be uh, something very, very important for patients, specifically for a type of patient, patients that did not have bone, patients that could not do bone grafting, patients that could not afford such high costs. And, uh, and because this technique uh, reduces the cost and gives more quality, not only aesthetics, but also uh, in the long, in long term. So this is really something very, very important. But I, I thought that this would be another tool in our toolbox to treat people. What happened was that it grew and today probably is the most important technique in the world of, uh, of rehabilitation of people without teeth. And, uh, and this, became, you know, this became huge in terms of, of, uh, of technique used by the dentists. And obviously then we saw today, we saw the impact on the, on the, on the population. And uh, every company in the world that makes implants, they are copying the all on four with other names. And th this just shows the importance and the impact this has on the population. This, is, this was a huge breakthrough for, uh, for human beings. When did you have uh, your first case of all on four? The first case was uh, 1993 uh, on the mandibula. And, um, and for about one month I did not sleep well <laughs> because I was, uh, I was always expecting the patient to call me and to say something is wrong. Uh, although we had everything prepared technically and, uh, and uh, we tried everything, you know, everything was, it, it, looked, it looked gay. But, you know, the, the, the first test is the test, you know. You can look, everything can look okay on the paper and on the, on the, on the computer and on the, on the, on the technical uh, model. But it is the final, the final test is the patient. And, uh, and, um, and so I remember very well that situation. I remember very well that I booked this patient for the whole afternoon just to be relaxed and everything, you know, so, uh, but of course it took two, three hours. Today it takes 20 minutes, but in those days it was like two, three hours because we did not, we did not have all the products. We did not have all the instruments. So we were like um, doing pioneers. pioneers. We were doing things with the, uh, today everything is as a protocol. So we have the instruments for everything. We have the right products. So we have the sequence. So we have a protocol. We have a team. Now, in those days, this was um, experience, you know, so we were trying to do something. So, um, yeah, um, I remember very well. What's the thing that brings you the greatest joy? Oh, the greatest joy. You know, the greatest joy is when a man or a woman of, uh, of 70 year old or 80, uh, actually finishes the treatment and holds you and cries. You know, when, when a man, a true man of 70 years old, like a farmer with big hands, holds you, you know, and cries, you know you touch this person, you know. And, uh, and uh, this happened many times. You know, people are really, they suffer without teeth and they have dentures. They suffer, they don't have uh, self-confidence. And uh, in two hours, you give them teeth, they can bite an apple. Uh, some of these people, they, they are, um, they really, um, they really emotionally touched. And when he holds you and cries and say, thank you, thank you very much, doctor. Wow, that, you know, I mean, that touches, it's not possible to forget that. Dragi prieteni, cam asta a fost. Nu uitați, Dentestet este locul în care îți poți recapăta zâmbetul în patru ore. Cu acest proiect, All on 4, semnat Paul Malo.